Hello, my name is Mark and I am Geco Tutor, and I'm here with Practical Machinists to continue this series of programming apart on a CNC lathe using G code. So, today we're going to be looking at the screw cutting cycle. So before we start this quick lesson, I just want to say that you should never type in code into your machine that you didn't write yourself, including mine. This is purely for demonstration purposes and educational reasons. And this code will probably not work in your machine unless you're using exactly the same machine as me, set up the same parameters and everything else. So just be aware that a low G code is um, a general language that is very similar across all machines. There can be slight differences. So you need to be aware of that before you copy a program. Okay, so let's continue with this series. So we're gonna start off with an operator's note to say that we're gonna be screw cutting. And I've got a little bit of information there about what thread we're cutting here. So it's a 9 16 British Standard Whitworth. So British Standard Whitworth has a 55 degree thread angle. So we're going to be using a 55 degree screw cut tool. Um, and this is how we're going to be using it. So the next line here is our safety line. So I've gone over this many, many times before, but just quickly, G54 is our work shift datum, G20 is imperial units, G90 sets up to absolute coordinate system, G80 turns off any cycles that may be active, and G40 turns off any tool nose radius compensation that may be active. So our next line here, we're calling tool four with T04, and the datum table offset position 04. So it's pulling that tool information from the machine here. So we don't need to give any other information because it's all in the tool table and the machine pulls that data from there with this second 04 on our tool call. Now MO6 is our tool change command. It's going to uh, turn the turret around and put our tool into the center line position and get it ready to start cutting. So this time we're using G97 to give me full control of the RPMs of that spindle. So we're setting the spindle to 400 RPM. So reasonably slow, but we are screw cutting. And MO3 would turn that spindle on in a clockwise direction. Next, we're gonna wrap it to the start position. So I'm coming into X one inch. So we've already removed a lot of that material there. We're down to um, our finished size of the material. So if we bring it down to one inch, we know that we're clear from any material and I'm bringing it around to 0.2 of an inch off the face of the part. So plenty of clearance there. So I'm coming over in Z 0.2. Now this gives the machine a little bit of run out to start the thread. So we're gonna be starting the thread 0.2 away from the material. And that gives us a little run in to make sure there's no backlash there. Not that there should be backlash on a CNC machine anyway, but if there is any play there, giving it a little bit of a lead in, a little bit of a run out, we'll remove any risk of that and MO8 turns on the coolant. So now we get to the first line of our screw cutting cycle. Now I'm using the two line version of the G76 here. The one line version is also available. It tends to be used on older controls, but we can also screw cut using G92 or G32. Now for more information about all the different cycles, you can pop over to my website. I have a free article there, or my lathe course goes into all of this in extreme depth. So you would be an expert on this subject. Okay, so this G76 line, the first section here, this P value, this often causes a lot of confusions. Um, so what this is, is actually three different um, commands right here. The first O2 is the amount of spring cuts we're gonna do. So once we're down to the final core diameter size, the machine is then gonna do two spring cuts before it finishes the thread. Now the second two digits here, the zero, zero, is the run out of the threads. So because we have that um, groove at the end of the thread there, we don't need to worry about the run out. So I've left this at zero at the moment. So zero means it comes out at 45 degrees, but we can have a tapered thread at the ends there to um, sort out the run out. And, um, but by that groove there, it means the bolt is gonna fit up nice and tight against that diameter. So we don't need to worry too much about that. And now the final two digits here is the angle of the thread, metric 60, imperial 55. So the Q value here sets the minimum depth of cut. We're not going to go below two foul um, in a cut the whole time we are machining this thread here. So that's the minimum cut. Now this doesn't have a decimal point. It's in thousandths of an inch or microns, depending what system you're working in. Now be aware this may change if you're programming Siemens or Akuma. This is based on standard FANUC here. 
And R is our finishing allowance. This is how much we're gonna leave on before we do our final pass. Okay, so the next line of the G76 has even more information here. So again, we start with G76 to let the machine know we're still talking about our thread cycle. Our X is the core diameter of the screw thread. Our Z is the finishing point of the thread. Now, because we've got that recess there, I'm not going right up to the shoulder, so I've come 20 foul away from that shoulder, just so our screw cut tool is not getting too close to it. And because we've got that recess there, that's totally fine to do. Now we have P and Q here. Now, like the previous Q, both of these don't have decimal points, so they're either microns or thousandths of an inch. So let's have a quick look what these P and Qs do. Now we have P here, this is our depth of thread. So this is radial, so you would have to take the core diameter, the major diameter, and divide them by two, because this is the depth of each tooth. And then finally we have Q here, which is the depth of the first cut. So we can start off taking large cuts when we're not removing much material. And as we go deeper and more material is being removed, we can decrease the size of the cuts as the machine naturally steps down from this size to our smaller size that we've listed above. And then finally, F is our pitch of the thread that we are cutting. So once the screw threads are finished, the tool will revert back to that um, position that we put on the M08 line. So all this line is doing is just confirming that position, making sure the tool's in a safe position before we wrap it back to the machine datum, which is what we're going to do on this line, this G53. So G53 sets the machine datum, and then X and Z tells the machine where to go in reference to that datum. Now usually the machine datum is where the tool change would be, so this would take it to the tool change position, certainly in my case here. Now M09 turns off any coolant that's active, and um, now's a good time to turn off the coolant. It could be done the line above also. Now M05 stops the spindle, and M01 is my optional stop. I always end each sequence on an optional stop. It gives me the chance to stick my head in the machine and check that thread before I remove any more material. And we might need to take an extra cut on that thread or know whether we've scrapped the part, we might need to part that, part, that bit off. So that's how I write my sequence for a screw cut cycle. Now I'm out of practice when it comes to um, imperial threads. Um, honestly, I've been working on metric for quite a while now, so I've not had to use um, BSW for quite a while, but that's how we cut a uh, an imperial screw thread using G-code. So if you want to know more about this subject, I have lots of free articles and lots of paid courses over on my website at gcodetutor.com. And particularly my lathe G-code programming course goes into all of these screw threads in much, much more detail. And you'll learn how to screw cut using G32 and G92 also.